Hello, this is Jennifer McGuire, and I hope your December is off to a good start. I took a little break from my favorite Crafty Things series so that I could celebrate Thanksgiving with my family and then also travel to the White House for a Christmas tour. So now I'm back with the series. Apologize for the delay. Today I'm going to talk about finishing touches. All those little things that you can do to your card to make it extra special. Try to pull it all together in this video. Also, be sure to check out my blog because I have a new discount code that will save you a little money on these products, and I also have a big giveaway. Let's go ahead and get started. I'm starting with shimmer pens because I think this is a great way to add a lot of fun to your cards without much effort and zero bulk. So I have the Spectrum Noir shimmer pen, that is the black pen, and the white one is the Wink of Stella shimmer pen. Now you don't need both of these, you can just go for one, but I happen to reach for both for different reasons. You can see they both have a brush tip with a barrel filled with a shimmer that leads to that brush tip. You can see the white Wink of Stella has a finer point so I seem to reach for that when I need to color into tight areas. However, I do find that the Spectrum Noir pen seems to put out a little more shimmer when I apply it. Now, one thing to keep in mind with these is that it does dry clear, so it just adds shimmer. When you put it down first, the paper becomes wet, right? So it looks a little bit darker, but I'm gonna dry this with a heat gun so you can see how it actually looks. So it doesn't change the color, it just adds shimmer. The top is the Spectrum Noir, the bottom is the Wink of Stella. I will say that the Wink of Stella shimmer seems a little bit warmer than the Spectrum Noir, but it's really not that noticeable of a difference. Another thing that I really like about these pens is that you can use them to kind of blend or do water coloring. So that top red stripe there, I put down some Copic marker. Now normally with Copic, I want to put it down and keep the color how it is after I've colored it and then just add shimmer on top. But notice that the Spectrum Noir kind of moves a little bit of that red ink. Now that second line there is Zig Clean Color Real Brush. If I were to put that onto a watercolor paper or a Bristol Smooth cardstock, the Spectrum Noir would allow me to do watercolor. This is just regular cardstock here, so it's just moving the color a little bit. But if you use that on watercolor paper or a coloring friendly cardstock, you can get gorgeous watercolor looks. That bottom is the Tombow Dual Brush Pen, so it moves that too. Now on this side, on the right, I'm using the Wink of Stella Shimmer Pen, and you can see that it moves the color around too, but not as much, I would say, especially on the Copic. So I find if, I'm color, if I just wanna add shimmer over a Copic colored image, I use my Wink of Stella because it doesn't move the color much. I don't wanna move that Copic after I've done all the coloring. But for watercolor, where I want them to move the color around, I usually reach for the Spectrum Noir Shimmer Pen. So that's why I use both. You really don't need to have both. Again, the Wink of Stella has a sharper tip, but the Spectrum Noir, I think, has a better price point. So these are all things to consider, but you can't go wrong with either of them. Next, I have to mention the Sparkle Shimmer Spritz that I use quite often. The key with this is you need to shake the living daylights out of it before you use it. You wanna shake it so much that when you look at the bottom, you don't see any of the shimmer settled there. And the, the product almost looks like a kind of gray, milky look, but it does dry clear with that shimmer. Now, what I normally do is I put my card on the floor of my shower and I spray a mist down from about four feet above, I would say, about five sprays. And that gives me a nice, even mist. However, I wanted to show you here on camera that you just put a little bit down and I really think the higher you spray it, the better result you get. You don't get any splotches. So that's why I do it in my shower, but you can do it at your desk by all means. Once you heat set this or let it dry, you get this nice even shimmer over the entire piece. I often will spray a card with the shimmer right before or right after I finish putting it together so that the whole card shines. It's absolutely beautiful. This reminds me of the color that you get with the Spectrum Noir. You can see the color does not change. However, it does add that gorgeous shimmer. It's beautiful. There is a refill bottle available also, so be sure to consider that. Now, one thing that I've tried recently, and I'm still trying to figure out if it works really well, but so far so good, is to refill my shimmer pens with that shimmer mist. So I just pour a little bit in there, shake it, and it seems to be working. I will be testing this for a while longer and make sure that it still works nicely. 
And I will let you know, but this is something to consider. But I do usually just replace the Wink of Stella shimmer pen or the Spectrum Nora shimmer pen when I'm done. But if you're looking for something to refill, this may work for you to use that shimmer spritz as a refill. Again, I'll tell you how it holds up over time, but so far so good. So that covers shimmer that you can add to cards. Now let's talk a little bit about regular shine. I really like to use Ranger's Glossy Accents. When you apply this to something, it puts a clear dimensional shine to it. You can also use this as an adhesive, but I stick to it mostly for putting that shine on something. I especially like to die cut images or shapes and then cover it with Glossy Accents and let it dry. It makes it look like a dimensional embellishment. Now I have put on my bottle of Glossy Accents a Scrap Perfect tip. This replaces the nozzle. You just pop the nozzle off of the Glossy Accents and screw this on instead. This keeps it from getting clogged and allows me to do really fine precision with it. Apply tiny little dots. So the cap screws in to the tip of it. You'll see there's like kind of like a needle in the cap that goes right into the nozzles to keep it from getting clogged. So now I can put tiny amounts out and I don't have to worry about the bottle clogging. This is great for applying over detailed areas. Now I know I did a video where I talked more about these precision tips and I'll link to that here. Some people mentioned that sometimes this gets clogged. Now what I do is I wipe the tip off before I put the cap on and I tap it on my table to kind of settle any of the glossy accents back into the bottle. I also kind of burp it by squeezing it a few times so air gets in the nozzle and then I put the cap on and I've never had any problems. However, some people said that they do. I think it's important to put the cap on right away. That should help. But if the tip of your nozzle gets kind of covered with glossy accents or that little needle in the cap gets covered, you can clean it off and that should help with keeping it nice and uh, clear without having any clogging issues. To clean it, I have in the past used the best cleaner ever. That product is made by the folks who make this tip scrap perfect. So sometimes I'll wipe that over the needle just to make sure it's staying nice and clean. But again, I haven't had any problems. I just wanted to mention that in case anybody else did. Now, the, I use the larger bottle of Glossy Accents from Ranger. I have a couple of them with these tips. These last a long time, these bottles do, but there are smaller bottles available if you prefer. Okay, let's talk next about enamel dots. I don't know about you, but there are so many out there that I get overwhelmed by the choices. I found that I really like Your Next Stamp gumdrops. The reason I like these is there are so many options available. There are glitter dots. There are solid, like shiny dots. There are matte drops even. I can't wait to try those out. And they come in variety packs that are great. They have many to choose from. I also like that these aren't too bulky, so I can put them on a card and put it through the mail without worrying too much, whereas some enamel dots out there are too thick and they kind of tear up the envelope or you have to worry about uh, adding extra postage. I've had a lot of luck with these. I love the color options. I tend to cut mine into strips and store them together with similar colors. Next, I wanted to show you the Doodlebug Eerie Eyes. Now, these are really intended, I think, for Halloween or little monster faces, but I use these also for fun, playful faces all year round. I like these because they aren't as bulky as Google Eyes, but still add interest. I'm a big fan of adding the little Google Eyes to different projects, little critters, and these are great because they'll hold up in the mail better. Now, I will say it seems like these are hard to get your hands on right now. They seem in high demand. That might be because I bought many packs of them for myself, but they definitely are something great to have on hand. Next, I wanted to talk about the Nouveau Drops. I've gotten a lot of questions about these. To be honest, I've had them for a while, but I really wanted to play with them and make sure they stood up to all my tests before I recommended them. These are great for creating your own enamel dots or accents to add to cards. So the Nouveau Drops come in a few different varieties. The one that I use the most, or most people use, are the Crystal Drops. They put down nice opaque drops, nice solid color, a lot of colors are available. You can do different sizes as you see here. And I found that it never really clogs. I haven't had trouble with clogging at all. Now you can put these directly onto your project, or you can do what I'm doing here and putting drops onto a Ranger craft sheet. If you do this on the Ranger craft sheet, you can set them aside and let them dry overnight and then just pop them off. They won't stick to the craft sheet. 
And then you can glue them onto your projects when you're ready. That way you don't have to wait for them to dry. You can see here there's like a silver metallic. There are even glitter ones like the one I'm showing here. And the glitter ones actually dry smooth, which I think is great. Now I'm gonna let those dry overnight and bring them back to show you in a moment. Now you can put these directly onto your card. I will say you wanna make sure you give it a ton of time to dry. So if you're doing them directly onto your card, you want to leave it dry overnight before you do anything with it. When you're squeezing it out, hold the bottle straight up and pull straight up after you're done applying it and you get a perfectly round dot every time. Now I will say I've done lots of testing to this. I squeezed a bunch onto some cardstock, let it dry overnight, put it in the mail. The envelope f held up fine, the dots held up fine. They didn't stick to the inside of my envelope. I will say if you put a ton of weight on it, a ton of weight, they might flatten a little bit, but not much, you know, nothing to really worry about if you ask me. Now, I, these were the crystal drops that I just showed you. There are also jewel drops. The jewel drops are translucent, so you can kind of see through them, whereas the ones I showed you earlier are opaque. So here is a jewel, jewel a drop. That is so hard to say. And this is like a smoky gray, so it's not perfectly clear. But you can see when you dispense it, it allows you to see through the paper. So it's kind of like a colored glossy accent. I like the smoky gray color because when you put it onto a colored cardstock, that color shines through, but it's just like a little bit darker and almost looks a little silver. But there are lots of different colors to the jewel colors, and they're all tinted. It's like a clear tint, so you can still see through it. So there are the different options. Be careful when you get them that you get what you're looking for. Now I let these dry overnight on the craft sheet and you can see you can just pop them right off. And you see over on the left, I did some of the translucent jewel drops also to show you that you can create like your own little raindrop embellishments using those too. So these just slide right off of the craft sheet and now I can put just a tiny dot of maybe like a Ranger multi matte adhesive, something very strong and put this, uh, glue this onto our project. That way you can glue them on and not wait for that thick uh, Nouveau drop to dry completely. It really saves quite a bit of time and look how fun those are. Those clear ones are fantastic too. There are many things you can do with the Nouveau drops and the price is really good. So I encourage you to check them out. They might be something that you'd have fun using in card making also. I also really like certain pens for adding interest to my cards. The first one that I like the most is the Uniball White Signo Pen. I've been using this pen for years and it's a great way to add white to colored cardstocks. I often will add tiny little dots or just add little outlines with white. Now with this pen, the key to it is to write very slow and that will help you get a better coverage with it without the pen skipping. If the pen skips at all, just scribble it on your finger and that kind of gets the ink to flow a little bit better. It stays nice and bright white. I also like the white glaze pen. This pen is fun for adding even smaller dots. So it just depends on what my need is, but you can see how together you can have a lot of options. You can cover bigger areas with the first pen and smaller areas with the second. So I like to use both. And when you put this pen to create dots, the ink just seems to kind of flow out and it dries with a teensy bit of dimension to it. So that's something nice too. They're very inexpensive by the way. Then I also have the black glaze pen. This one is, gr I mean, this is as black as black can be. It's a perfect dark black. So it's great for coloring over eyes on critters to make them stand out after you've finished coloring it. It also adds a little bit of shine and a teeny tiny bit of dimension. So I really recommend these. Again, all of these pens are very inexpensive and make a big difference on adding details to your colored images or any kind of stamped projects. You can see that the ink flows out very nicely from this just by tapping it onto the paper. I'm gonna hold it up so you can kind of see that shine that you get. This does take a little bit of time to dry, but you can heat set it if you want to. Really beautiful. You can see the glaze look on the black pen especially. Another inexpensive pen that is great to have in your collection is the Stardust Glitter Pen. It's similar to the two glaze pens, but it puts down some fine glitter or shimmer. Now, unlike the brush pens that I showed you earlier in the video, this is fine tip. So you can color in tiny areas and it's pretty intense shimmer. So it's great for just adding little dots or outlines to your stamped images. Really makes, it really goes a long way for being such an inexpensive product. So these are some good 
stocking stuffers that you might want to ask for. They work on any card. Another fun product is the snow marker. Now this you could use for snow, but you could also use it for other things like fur and such. Basically, you want to shake it up really well, and then I put a really heavy layer down. I kind of get the, the product to come out by tapping it lightly, and you want to put it down as heavy as you can. The heavier you put it down, the more it will puff up. So it almost comes out like a mix of acrylic paint and water. It's like a real watery acrylic paint. That's what it looks like, but when you heat set it, you need a heat gun for this. When you heat set it, you'll see that it starts to puff up, and it is amazing what it looks like if you put the product down heavy in heavy amounts. This works great again for snow on a tree or fur on um, a little critter. You can add color over top if you want to. Now it is kind of soft, so it will flatten a bit when you put it through the mail, but it still has that dimension to it that really is fun. Now a few people have mentioned to me that it feels sticky after it dries. I don't find that, but if you find yours feels a bit sticky and you're worried about putting it in an envelope, you could always just brush some anti-static powder tool over it and that will remove the stick or kind of cover it up. Then you won't have to worry about it. This is really a fun, inexpensive product, especially around the holidays. Now another product that I've been using a lot lately is clear thread. I like to get this clear thread, you can barely see it here in the video. And what's great about this is you can create fun like interactive cards with it where you have an element kind of hanging or suspended on the front of a card. You can do spinner cards, you can do pop-up cards. This clear thread is, thread is very handy to have. I will link to a video where I used it so you can see it in action. Again, it's another inexpensive product that is really fun for card making. Speaking of interactive cards, the Chibitronics lights have been very popular this year. Now this is a more expensive product, so it might be something you want to ask for for Christmas, but in the box of Chibitronics, there is a great book with little practice things that you can do and instructions. Then has it has in here everything you need to create an element that lights up on your card. It really is something fun to do for that extra special card. You don't want to do this on every card, but it really is fun to create and fun to give to someone kind of as a gift. Now I will link here to a video where I used these Tribitronics so you can see how it is done. But basically on my card, all you do is squeeze the dragon's belly and the candles light up. So this is really fun, something worth checking out. Another product that I cannot get enough of, and I have invested a lot of money in this year, is the Tailored Expressions Felt. I use the felt to kind of make use of my dies for non-paper crafting projects. It's kind of my hobby. And also, I like to use felt on cards because it's not too bulky, but it adds a softness and a really wonderful homemade feel. I like the tailored expressions because there are three colors in a pack, a good amount, beautiful colors, great quality, and it takes kind of the guesswork out of finding a good felt. So I have really liked these. There are many different color packs, so I encourage you to check those out. This is something that I think you can really use to kind of extend the life of different products that you have for your card making hobby. Now sequins, sequins are all the rage and I find the options so overwhelming. So I thought I'd share with you some good basic ones that you can use to accent your card. Now there are gorgeous combinations out there for shaker cards and such, but these are basic ones that offer a lot that you can use to accent on cards. I really like the Simon Says Stamp Crystal Reflections because there are some beautiful colors in here so you can find whatever color you need for a project. A lot of different sizes in there also and some gorgeous shine. They really catch the light beautifully. It's a great inexpensive pack. And again, these are great to just glue onto a card, whatever ones match. And I use Ranger Multi-Medium Adhesive to glue these on because then I can be sure they will not come off when I mail them. Another uh, kind of mix option that's great is from Lucy's Cards. Now this is the Twilights pack. This has some beautiful colored sequins of different sizes in it, but it also has some little iridescent stars and dots and even some raindrops, which are like clear dimensional uh, circles or drops that you can glue to your project. So you can see all the little stars in there and here's one of the little raindrops that you can see, add some dimension and shine to your project. You just wanna glue that down with a straw adhesive too. So you can kind of pick and choose what you want out of here for your project, or you can just use the whole collection in a shaker card. 
Now, I do like to have some basics on hand that I like to reach for often for little accents. One is the I Love You set from Lucy's Cards. These are all iridescent and there are little hearts in this set. So there are bigger hearts and tiny hearts. Now those tiny hearts take some time to glue onto a project, a little bit of patience, but they catch the light so beautifully. And if you have a simple card, they make a great accent. So I encourage you to check out this set. And there is also the Starry Night set from Lucy's Cards that has a mix of different stars with that same iridescent look. Now they look a little pink here, but if you were to put it on a blue background, it kind of picks up that blue color. So you can see that it works with different colors of cards. That's why I was recommending these kind of as an all around product. Okay, now it's also good to have tiny little stars and hearts. So I use from Pretty Pink Posh the mini stars and the mini hearts. Here are the mini stars in silver. They come in gold too. Again, these are tiny and tricky to put onto cards because they are so small. But if you put a bunch of these on a background, they really catch the light and really make uh, for a really fun background. I also like to have a pack of clear sequins in different sizes. These work on any card, once again, regardless of the color. And I really like the Pretty Pink Posh Sparkling Clear Set. That one has a bunch of different sizes that seem to work for everything. So there you have my suggestions for finishing touches for 2016. I hope this was helpful to you. Be sure to check out the YouTube description below for the products that I use, but be sure to also go to my blog where there is a discount code and much more information. And I have two other videos that might be of interest. The first video here in the mid middle is my favorite finishing touches from 2015. Many of those still hold true, so that might be of interest to you. And the other video shows how to make that light up card. Thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful and I'll see you again very soon.